Well, hello everyone. I'm Deb Goodkin, the Executive Director of the FreeBSD Foundation. Thank you for joining us for our last FreeBSD Friday of the year. So these are introductory um, presentations on various areas of FreeBSD. And they're all recorded so you can access them in the future. And if you have any um, ideas or topics that you'd like us to cover in 2023, please post them here for us and we'll try to cover them next year. So before I introduce our speaker today, I would just like to send out one last plea, actually it won't be my last, but another plea for um, you and, and folks that you know and companies that you work for to consider making a donation to us, the FreeBSD Foundation. When you invest or when you donate to us, it is a, an investment in FreeBSD, the advancement of FreeBSD, and it helps us fund uh, software development projects to improve FreeBSD. It helps us fund uh, FreeBSD advocacy work and all around the world. It helps us fund training and uh, coursework for bringing new folks um, into the project. So please consider uh, making a donation and we'll put the URL in the IRC channel. So moving on to our presenter for today. Um, actually, before uh, I introduce him, I, if you have any questions during his talk, go ahead and post them either um, in the IRC channel. Actually, I think that's the only place you can post it. So we'll, we'll put information there for you. So today, our presentation is an introduction to FreeBSD services by Drew Rukowski. So let me tell you a little bit about Drew. Drew started working on FreeBSD documentation for the foundation as an intern in 2015, and he continued as a consultant starting in 2018. As of 2020, Drew began working full-time for us as a marketing coordinator. He lives in New York City, and he recently built a new computer from scratch so he could learn more about computers and that whole process. So now I'll, I'll hand it off to Drew. Awesome, thank you so much for the introduction. Um, so my name is Drew Kowski, um, and today's FreeBSD Friday, um, it's just gonna touch um, on a few of the services that can be enabled right out of box on a fresh FreeBSD install. So I want to touch on uh, three specific types of services. So I'm going to touch on multimedia. We're going to set up audio, um, networking, uh, set up basic Wi-Fi, um, and then touch on external hardware with printing. Um, the intention of this FreeBSD Friday is primarily to give uh, options and ideas to people who may have just installed FreeBSD. Um, perhaps you heard about it. Um, or have known for, about it for a little while, and you finally got about to installing it, um, got through the installation process, uh, rebooted, and then just sat there thinking, what next? Um, I know personally, the first time I used FreeBSD, I was a little overwhelmed from the lack of a, uh, a graphical user interface. I had never used the operating system that didn't automatically boot into one. Um, so this FreeBSD Friday is hopefully aimed at people like me who were kind of either overwhelmed or a little lost at the beginning, uh, just give a couple ideas on uh, what to do after that. Um, so uh, as Deb mentioned, I'll be addressing questions uh, after the presentation. So feel free to put them in the, uh, the IRC chat. Um, and I just wanna quickly um, share the FreeBSD Foundation uh, resource page because, let me pull this up for you guys. All right, so as I mentioned, uh, I'm not gonna touch on to a desktop um, environment uh, during this talk today, but if that is what interests you, if you watch this FreeBSD Friday and think, actually, I do want a graphical user interface, uh, check out the FreeBSD Foundation resource page. Um, we have a bunch of guides either on distributions that have a native um, uh, desktop environment or even uh, we have a video guide and a written guide um, that I made on uh, installing a desktop environment uh, from a fresh install like this. Uh, so I just wanted to share that just in case that's, that's more your speed. 
Um, but today we're going to be working purely from the command line and uh, touching on these services. So I'm going to share my FreeBSD instance, which I have running on a uh, VM right now. Awesome. So we're going to start with uh, audio. So I'm going to be, like I said, I'm using VirtualBox. This is a fresh instance of FreeBSD. Um, I set it up, I cloned it this morning. Um, so I only made one change, which was typing out something that I knew I was going to have typos during the uh, presentation, and I didn't want to run into that. Um, and another thing to note, if you want to follow along, um, feel free to try to. I'm going to be going relatively fast. So uh, just know that this whole session is being recorded. If you want to follow along, you can always go to the YouTube channel. We're going to have this posted there. Um, and that will be easier to follow along with because uh, you'll be able to actually pause it um, and make sure that you're following each step. So uh, the first thing you're going to want to know if you're setting up audio, you're going to want to know your uh, audio card and chipset. Um, I'm lucky. I can look over here and I can actually uh, see it right now, but uh, you might not be that lucky. So uh, if you're going to try to find that, you're going to use a uh, D message uh, and you're going to filter out. So you just, oops. Probably type that right. Uh, so you only see the PCM results. Um, and this will show you uh, your the sound card that you're using. Um, once you have that information, I'm going to once again go back to the foundation website here. You're going to want to go to the release information page on uh, freebsd.org. Um, you're going to want to go down to the release that you're using. Um, you're going to find the release that you're currently using, and you're going to go over to hardware compatibility list. Once you're here, you can just search for, I believe it's under audio devices, or sound devices, um, and you're going to find the driver that applies to the, uh, the card that you're using. Uh, I've done this before, so I know that it's going to be the SMD HDA one that I'm using. And so SMD forward slash underscore HDA, there you go. So this is a driver that supports the controllers uh, that I currently am using. So once you have that information, you're going to go back to your FreeBSD instance. And you're going to use KLD load. Um, and you're going to use that driver. So I, for me, that's going to be SMD underscore HDA. Uh, this is already loaded for me. Uh, some of these modules are uh, automatically loaded, especially the really common ones uh, like this one. Uh, but if you have a less common one, that may have uh, just returned an actual uh, output for you. Um, you can find inf more information if you go to the manual pages of these. So if you use uh, man-k SMD, it's going to pull up the uh, manual page for you so you can see tons of information about the SMD drivers. Um, once you've checked that sound module, um, you can add a line to your uh, bootloader configuration file. So I'm going to use VI, the VI editor for that. I'm going to go down to the end here and I'm going to add this line SMD underscore HDA underscore load. Yes, uh, and this is just going to make sure that it's loaded um, automatically on boot. If uh, you're having trouble finding the driver that um, works with your sound card, there is a uh, meta driver that can load all the common sound drivers. So if you're trying to follow along and you couldn't identify which one you have, uh, you can instead do KLD load. Make sure I get this right. SMD underscore driver, and this is the meta driver. It's going to load that. And if you're using this one, you can add the line to uh, your bootloader configuration file. You can add the line SMD underscore driver load, which will do the same thing and load it on boot. Um, but this is the uh, meta driver that's going to 
load all those uh, drivers for you. So there's a couple ways that you can check uh, now if the sound card has been detected and properly configured. Uh, the first, the easiest one is to simply run a D message again, the one that we ran at the beginning. Filter out so it's only PCM results. And you're gonna check that the correct sound card is there um, and it's at the correct uh, device on PCI zero. Uh, you can also check it using cat slash dev slash FND stat, um, which should list the PCM devices that are properly configured. Um, if none are listed here, uh, you're going to have to go back and make sure that it was properly, uh, perhaps uh, there was a typo. Um, just check to make sure that you properly configured it in the earlier steps. Um, and finally, the uh, in my opinion, the best way to test uh, audio is to use cat, and you're going to use file name. This The name of the file doesn't really matter, so I'm going to use the one I just used, which is dev SMB stats. to dev slash DSP. And you won't hear it because I'm using um, uh, I have it in my ear. But if you hit Enter, you'll get a little bit of a feedback. And that just shows you that the sound card is properly configured and actually working in output and sound. And that's basically it. Um, these, like I said, I'm just going to cover like the absolute basics of getting these services set up. Um, if you want a more in-depth guide, uh, on the FreeBSD Foundation website, I have a audio guide that also will cover setting up Bluetooth audio. Um, and one of the things that I think a lot of people run into when they're uh, setting up audio on FreeBSD is automatically switching between outputs. Um, and that is one thing that I cover in that guide. But like I said, I'm just touching on it today. So we're going to move on to networking, um, in this case, specifically Wi Fi. Uh, wi Fi is kind of one of those things that the first time you do it on FreeBSD probably will just work. Um, but knowing how to actually configure it um, can be helpful if you do end up running into issues. Um, perhaps you're using um, a public network and you've never done that before. Perhaps you're using a hidden network um, or less common setups. So once again, we're going to need to identify a card um, because a wireless networking card is going to be required uh, to access any wireless network. And FreeBSD will need to be configured um, to the correct wireless network support. Uh, once again, I'm very lucky in that I can actually see uh, my Wi-Fi card. Uh, but if you don't have that going for you, you're going to want to use this ctlnet.wan.devices. And this is um, because I'm using a virtual machine so that I can live stream this. Uh, it is a bridged connection. So FreeBSD currently thinks that there is an Ethernet connection. Um, so when I hit enter, I'm going to get no results. Uh, if you are on a FreeBSD machine, you will get a result here. Uh, just for this section, it's going to be kind of a uh, do as I, I say, um, not as I do, because I'm going to be getting some outputs that are going to look a little bit different. Um, but I'll try to make note of that so that you know when, when uh, FreeBSD is showing something that, that you shouldn't expect when you're doing this. But once you do that, it's going to actually give you an output that uh, is going to uh, identify your wireless adapter. Um, you can once again go to the hardware page of the release. I search Wi-Fi, I can go to the wireless network interfaces here. Um, so I know with the uh, chipset that I have that I'm going to be using the ATH driver. Um, you might find that you're using the WI driver. Um, and that is one that are based on um, uh, intercell prism parts. Um, I just know that personally I'm using the ATH. So go back to FreeBSD here. Awesome. So knowing that I'm using the ATH driver, I can use 
I can go to uh, the bootloader configuration file again. At the very, very end of this, I'm going to add um, a line. It's going to be if underscore ATH underscore load. And once again, we're just loading the correct driver um, for the wireless adapter that I am using. I'm going to save those changes. If uh, perhaps you're using a different driver, um, that's going to change what you enter there. So let's say I'm using, uh, I mentioned before, the uh, WI driver. So I identified that that is the one that's correct for me. Um, it would be basically the same line, but it would be if underscore WI underscore load That's what you would do if you have a, uh, uh, a different driver. I'm going to delete that because that's not applicable to mine. Uh, in addition to those lines, you're going to want to add um, cryptographic support for security protocols. Um, these are intended to be dynamically uh, loaded uh, by the WLAN module, um, but you can actually load those automatically on boot as well. You're going to want to add three lines uh, to your uh, boot loader configuration, you're going to want to add WLAN underscore WEP. Going to load that. CCMP. And PKIP. Uh, and this will ensure that these are loaded when you boot. I'm just going to make sure I have no typos here. Uh, it's my big fear of doing this live stream, having a big typo and not knowing where I did it. All right, great. And I'm not going to actually reboot right now, but if, if you did, uh, you would see a message um, where it would, it would mention uh, your Wi-Fi card um, and that it's enabled. Um, I'm not going to do it right now because I, I know it works and I don't want to waste uh, your time by going through the whole uh, reboot process. So uh, if you want to find a network, the easiest way now that you've done that is through if config scan. Um, so this is another one where it's going to be, uh, uh, believe what I'm saying, because it's not going to actually work on this. As I said before, it thinks that it's connected by Ethernet. So when it tries to scan, it actually doesn't have an interface for that. Um, but you will see a list of available networks when you do this on your own device. Um, connecting to a WPA or WPA2 um, uh, personal network is going to rely on security protocols where you're going to need not only the name of the, um, the network, so the SSID, but also um, a PSK, a uh, pre-shared key, the password. Um, in order to make sure that FreeBSD has that information saved so you can join it and join it again in the future, you're going to want to add a line to the etc slash WPA underscore supplicants configuration file. Make sure I type that correctly. Great. Um, and you're going to want to add a line that looks somewhat like this. So network and then you're going to put the uh, SSID or the name of the network. For this one, I'm going to make up a network. Uh, we're going to call it test network. You're then going to add the pre-shared key or password. And I'm going to say this one's password, a very poorly um, created password. Um, and then you can just close your brackets. Um, something to note, the first time I ever did this, I was trying to join a hidden network. Um, I tried this a bunch of times and couldn't figure it out. Um, but if the network that you're trying to join is hidden, which some uh, routers automatically do, 
you're going to want to add a line that has scan underscore SSID equals one. And this is going to let FreeBSD know that the network is not publicly visible. Uh, once you've done that, save your changes and leave. And now you're going to have to make sure that uh, that uh, FreeBSD knows to configure the network on startup. So once again, we're going to edit etc slash rc.com. And we're going to add two lines here at the bottom. We're going to add WLANS. And then we're going to use the driver that we identified earlier. So I identified that I'm using the ATH driver, um, but you can replace this with the WI driver. Um, whichever one you identified is the one that you need to use. Then you're going to add the second line if config underscore WLAN zero equals WPA SYN CDH CP, which is going to confirm where uh, FreeBSD is going to get the DHCP from. All right, now that those are saved, you can restart uh, your uh, service. So you can do this with service netif restart, and it should automatically uh, join the network and allow you to uh, connect to the Wi-Fi. So once again, if I hit enter here, it's gonna get very confused. Um, actually, I believe I had a error in the actual file here. So let me quickly fix that. Yep. There it is. I knew there was going to be a typo sometime here today. <laughs> All right, so now if I run that, it's going to do it. But it, as you can see here, it uh, auto selected Ethernet. Um, if you do this and you're not on a bridge connection, it will connect you to the Wi Fi. Awesome. So that's all I'm going to talk about regarding Wi-Fi. Um, there's a ton more that you could uh, do with either uh, Wi-Fi, advanced networking, um, Bluetooth falls underneath that. But once again, I just wanted to kind of touch on um, these services today. So we're going to move on to printing. If you've ever wanted to print um, from the command line. So the first thing that you're going to need to do uh, is figure out which way that you're gonna be connecting to your printer. Uh, for me personally, my printer is on the network, um, but you could also have a USB printer um, or you could have a parallel port printer. Um, parallel port is mostly uh, kind of a, a legacy port. Uh, you won't see many computers having them but I am going to mention them just so that if you are on that kind of computer and you are using that kind of port, you know what to do in that situation. Um, so it's important to note that depending on your connection, uh, there's going to be device uh, entries that are created on FreePSD. If you are using a USB connection, that is going to happen at either dev slash ULPT0. It's also going to happen, it's also going to be created at dev slash UN LPT zero. Um, if you are using a parallel port that's going to be created at dev slash LPT zero. And you're not, there's not one created if you're using network. Instead, you're going to have to identify the actual DNS of your um, printer. So I, I figured that out earlier. There's a few ways that you can do that. Um, on Windows, you can go to your um, devices and printers um, section um, and identify that. You can also uh, use your wireless router to identify um, which one is connected. Um, 
because you're doing it through the network, there's no uh, way to do this automatically um, without knowing the DNS. But since I know that, I'm going to move on to the next step. I'm going to use I'm going to be using the uh, LPD or the line printer daemon to print. Um, one important thing to note is that you're going to want to be printing in the background. So you want to be able to use other applications. Uh, you want to have access to be able to run other commands while LPD is running. So you're going to want to create a directory in which uh, files will be stored while they are being printed. So let me clear all this out of your way so you can have a blank um, command line. We're going to want to start by making a directory at bar slash school slash LPD slash LP. Uh, once we've done that, we're going to want to change the owner. And then the permissions. All right. The directory has been uh, created now. Um, and you're going to want to add some information uh, to just give LPD uh, some info on where it's being printed, where, where, where the printer is located, um, whether it is through USB at one of those two uh, device entries, or if it's going to be over the network. So you're going to go and edit etc slash print cap. And in order to minimize typos, I did go ahead and before the FreeBSD Friday, I did create this entry. It's gonna be this uh, section right here, these six lines, you're gonna add this to your um, print cap. Um, and the specific line that you wanna make, you wanna pay close attention to is this first one. This is, um, if, this is for a printer that's been connected to over the network. So I have listed here the DNS um, so it can identify that. If you are on a, if you're using a USB connection, you're gonna add a completely different line. It's going to look like LP equals, and then we're gonna go to the place where I mentioned before um, the device entry was created. So that's going to be for a USB. Um, that will be dev slash un lpt zero. And if you're using a parallel port, let's uh, delete this line, add another one. You can add instead lp dev slash lpt zero. And so those are the three different ways of connecting. Um, mine is, like I said, over the network. So instead of those two lines, I'm going to quickly delete this one. And I'm going to make sure that I use this line right here, which has the DNS of my printer. Once you've done that, you're going to want to change. So you save your changes. Um, you can use the command check print cap. Um, and this is going to check the format um, of the actual file to make sure that you don't have any, uh, uh, you've not formatted it poorly. Um, it's also going to check if the files that you've listed here actually have, like, have actual destinations. As you can see here, I'm the directory that I created earlier um, is listed there as a var slash school slash lpd slash lp. If I hadn't gone and created that directory before, I would have gotten an output here that would have said error, um, the directory does not exist. So make sure you run that just to make sure that every step that you've done so far has been done correctly. All right, so the next step is to actually enable LPD. Um, so you can enable the daemon by, on. Um, well, let's set up, uh, the entry in um, etc slash rc.com uh, just to make sure that it's uh, automatically loaded. And you can do that by 
adding LPD, oops, LPD underscore enable. Oh, yes. Then quit. Um, and if you want to start service right now without rebooting, you can just do a service LPD start. Um, and I will show you that it's starting LPD. Um, as with any other service, um, if you don't want to be running it, you can just use service LPD stop. Um, and I'll show you that it's stopping the service. Uh, I do want to enable so I can actually print here though. So restart it. And now let's print something. Uh, it's super easy. I'm going to use the printf command right now to just print a really basic plain text two line um, thing. So I'm going to use print f. I'm going to use let's use a numerical and say hello world. Um, and then I'm going to identify that I need a no, well, I should probably spell that correctly. I'm going to create a second line and say, this is the second line. Super creative. Um, close that out. LPD. And if I've done everything correctly, my printer is on. I should, in a couple of seconds, And my printer is already starting. Um, so that's the direct way. If your printer is not running, uh, you may have done one of these steps incorrectly. Um, the other way that you can print directly um, is if you actually just use the LPR command. Um, before uh, I started, I created a text file. Um, so I created text file.txt, which once again just says hello world. I can print that text file as long as it's plain text using the command LPR text file txt. And that will also print through my over the network. All right. I do want to mention that printing is one of the things that can very quickly become very complicated. What we've done today is basically set up uh, FreeBSD to print plain text um, and print it directly. This will not work if you have a more complex file um, or if your, say your printer requires uh, files to be formatted in PostScript, um, you're gonna need another entry um, to your print cap um, file. So not only are you going to have these six lines, you're also going to add a filter line. I'm not going to dive too much into that, but I am going to pull up the handbook um, and just show you where you can find more information on that if you do want to get into filters, which are super fun, but would take a little bit too long to explain in this uh, FreeBSD Friday. So let me quickly share this page. All right, great. So if you go to the FreeBSD handbook, um, uh, you can find information on filters, which are essentially just the way that FreeBSD, well, LPD specifically, um, will translate and process files. Um, these can be really simple, um, where you create a really basic filter, um, or you can get really fancy with it and create a smart filter that is automatically going to identify the type of file input see exactly what is being sent to the printer and automatically convert it to the right format. Um, once again, this is just a little bit too, too much to cover during this free BSD Friday, but I did want to give people um, a, a place to go if they wanted to continue learning about filters um, and different ways of printing. But now that we've covered that, um, those are the basics. Um, and basically all the services that I wanted to cover specifically today. Let me quit my screen share. I know that personally, when I start with a, a new FreeBSD install, I usually start by setting up a desktop environment. Um, and I wanted this FreeBSD Friday to be not that, um, because I think it's really important to, if you are a FreeBSD newbie, like 
I was the first time I ever used FreeBSD, uh, it's important to know exactly what's happening in the background. Not only are you going to probably need a network the first time that you try to get a desktop environment set up, um, but you're also going to want to know how that network is being configured in the background. While you're on a, uh, a desktop environment, you might just click the Wi-Fi button, click the network that you want to join, enter your password, and you'll join. It's good to know what's happening in the background on FreeBSD itself, that FreeBSD is scanning for the network, it's found it, it's creating an entry where it has the SSID and the PSK so that in future it accesses that file and that's how you join that network. So that's very helpful for if you need to troubleshoot in the future or if you are in a situation where you are not on a desktop environment and you wanna do it purely from the command line. Um, and I just thought it would be really fun to kind of do a FreeBSD Friday covering how to get those services set up. So um, let me try again. I was having trouble accessing the IRC earlier, um, but I'm going to try to join that again to see if there's any questions regarding what we've covered so far. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to share them. All right. It doesn't look like we have any questions so far. Um, like I said, if you, if, you, if you do have a question, uh, make sure to share it right now so you can try to address it. Okay, well, I'll step in. Um, that was a great presentation. Thanks, Drew, for giving that. Um, I think it's always great to hear like folks covering um, like the basic things that we really need when we use FreeBSD system. And I, I appreciate how you explained like why we do certain things. And so, okay, so I am motivated to set up my, I don't know if we could see this here. I can't really see. I can't, really, okay, this is my computer. <laughs> I actually had to dust it off. <laughs> how embarrassing. <laughs> I'm gonna set it up with FreeBSD again. It's been a while since I've done that. Um, and I am going to, so my two goals, and I'm going to give myself a few weeks. So by the end of January, uh, just because we have a lot we're working on right now through the end of the year. And <laughs> I'm going to install a desktop environment. And so I'll install FreeBSD again. So the latest and greatest. And I'll install a desktop um, environment. And I'll use your how-to guide on that. And then I will use your, um, well, this video I'll watch again, and I'll, I'll, my goal would be then to set up the audio on FreeBSD. And like you mentioned earlier, there's a, um, there's a quick start guide on that. And if you go to the resource page, because I just did this, um, and, and, it's not, and you can't easily find what you're looking for, we do have a search there. And so I just typed in audio and it came up right away, which is great. So a lot of resources there for folks who, um, if you're off over the holidays and you have time and need something to do, uh, then go ahead and, and play around with FreeBSD. And um, I guess if you have questions um, after you, you watch the recording of this, then uh, you're welcome to tweet it. The questions, you can always send it to info at freebsdfoundation.org and, um, and also questions at freebsd.org, I believe is another place that you could ask questions. So uh, just a reminder that this uh, was recorded and so it'll be posted um, shortly. And um, so where do we post these on our website? On the and YouTube channel. On the YouTube channel. Okay, thanks, Sam. And um, <laughs> um, and yeah, and if you if you have a topic that you'd love us to cover, if you would like to cover a topic, please let us know. We're uh, working on our plans for 2023. And so we would love to hear those. So anyway, uh, I'd like to say happy holidays to everyone out there. It is holiday season, whether you celebrate um, specific holidays or not. It's just a um, time of year that we tend to step back, look, reflect on the year and look at, you know, what do we want to do for the new year? And 
Um, so anyway, I, I hope everyone is able to enjoy, enjoy your time. And I'll just say on behalf of the FreeBSD Foundation, thank you. Thank you for your donations. Thank you for your support. And we really look forward to supporting you in the new year. And thanks, Drew, and everyone else here behind the scenes. <laughs> thanks, everyone.